the lost world needs the rapture. I'm going to show you some scriptures here and uh, why the lost world, the best thing that could happen to them is to have the body of Christ leave. Let me show you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we'll begin in verse 3 and read down to verse 12. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is, a, he is God. Um, it's talking about the Antichrist there, in other words, the beast of Revelation chapter 13. Verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Now look at this, verse 6, And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. We'll stop there for a minute. Um, there's somebody that's hindering, that is letting this Antichrist from showing up. Hmm. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. What's going on there? Well, he who now letteth will let, that's the Holy Spirit working through the body of Christ until he be taken out of the way. You say the Holy Spirit. No, the body of Christ. Until the body of Christ be taken out of the way. And then the Antichrist shows up. You say, prove it. Okay, Revelation chapter 4. John there symbolizing the disciple that Jesus loved. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. John is taken out of the way. He goes up to heaven. Why would Jesus take John up to heaven if the body of Christ is not going to go up to heaven in the future? All right, John, uh, I'm going to show you what the body of Christ is going to go through in the future, so just stay down there on the earth. And you have to not take the mark, and you have to run, and you get beheaded and everything. No. Hey, John, I'm going to show you what the body of Christ is going to go through. Come up hither. And then we release the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 6. John goes up Revelation 4, Revelation 6, the Antichrist is unleashed. Huh, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. John's a member of the body of Christ. I'm a member of the body of Christ. Hopefully you are a member of the body of Christ. We are hindering, we are letting the Antichrist from showing up. Hmm. Are there people that want the Antichrist to show up? Yes, there are. And why? <clears throat> Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, lost people in other words, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You know there's people that don't receive the love of the truth. There are people that hate the truth. And they're looking for a leader. They're looking for a man to come and solve their problems and bring unity and whatever else. Uh, they're looking for the Antichrist. But there's this annoying, bigoted, narrow-minded, hateful, xenophobic, racist, sexist, just all the words that they come up with, group of people that are just hindering the one world government movement. Hello, I'm part of it. I enjoy being part of it. You're part of it too if you're saved. We are the ones that are hindering, that we are letting that whole system. <clears throat> verse 11 and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness these people have pleasure in unrighteousness the lost world loves unrighteousness they like their sin they like it a lot that's why they want to get rid of us they want to get rid of me and they want to get rid of you if you're saved so if you're lost let me just give you a little bit of advice um, I know you don't believe in God, many of you, if you're atheist or whatever. Um, if you're a Catholic, well, you do believe in some kind of a God, a uh, Trinitarian God, three different gods, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three different gods. They're not the same, so, you know, we might as well just tell the truth about it. But uh, you believe in your, in your God, um, and you are annoyed by people like me, heretics like me, then uh, be you atheist or feminist or witch or Muslim or whatever else, there's one thing that's standing in the way of you getting what you want, the body of Christ. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to bow your head 
right now and just say, God, I don't really believe in you, but I'd sure like to see some proof. Um, I'd like to see these Christians gone. So if you are real God, could you please get rid of these Bible-believing Christians, these people that hold to the King James Bible? They're so annoying. Uh, I just can't stand them. I, I hate this guy, this Brian Dunlinger, you know, the Rational Wiki people and, and all the other websites that go against me. Rational Wiki is the big one that, that just takes what I say and twists what I say and whatever else. I mean, I'm, I'm more of a threat to them than the Pope of Rome is, which is funny. Um, I guess I'm the biggest threat that there is on Rational Wiki. You know, somehow I'm the biggest threat to atheism, with, you know, whatever. But there's a lot of people that hate me. So why don't you just pray to God on a daily basis? Come to him every day and just say, God, please, if you're real, get rid of this guy. Okay. And anybody that follows him and his brothers and sisters that he calls in Christ and whatever else, all the people out there that are like him, get them, just get them out of here. Okay. So what, uh, what groups will benefit from us leaving? I have a few written down here. First of all, one worlders, all the people that talk about, we want a one world and we can all come together and, and all the tolerance and diversity for the people that they believe in being tolerant of. Um, they don't mean tolerance of people like me. Uh, they do better. They, they do a lot better. They need the rapture to happen, you see. They do a lot better if we were gone. Um, secondly, the feminists. You get these uh, chauvinistic preachers like me that say that, that women are the weaker vessel, and I actually believe what the Bible says. I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence uh, when the saints get together. Um, yeah, I actually believe that, and I preach it. I say that's a problem for feminists, you know. And then, of course, you have women like my wife that actually believes in modest apparel and, and looking up to me as, as her spiritual head. And, and, you know, see, we'd be better gone, you know, for the feminist movement to really move forward. People like me, we hinder it, you know. We kind of get people confused and whatever with the facts, you know. Don't confuse the feminists with the truth, you know. Just allow them to continue in their lies and their witchcraft. Feminists need the rapture. They do. Atheists, they're looking for scientific proof that God exists and that the Bible's true. Okay, what better scientific proof than, than I mean, you get to kill two birds with one stone. First of all, you get rid of the annoying preachers like me that cram our religion down your throat, you say. You don't have to watch me. That's always been another thing that cracks me up. You get irritated and mad, and then you keep watching me. Okay, um, but you get rid of all these irritating Christians that go around saying the earth is actually very young and and that uh, God created everything, and that there wasn't some big bang and whatever. You get rid of us, and you get your scientific proof. There you go. Everything that you want. The atheist dream is the rapture. It's exactly what they need. How about Catholicism? Again, uh, you get rid of the Bible-believing Christians. There's no more spiritual obstacle there to being able to restore your power. You know? Right now, you get a bunch of jerks like me and, and whatever else and other friends in the ministry, and we come out and we expose Catholics and we expose, oh, this guy's a Jesuit-educated man and this guy here and that Donald Trump at yeah, Fordham University and Joe Biden, his son's Jesuit-educated and Joe Biden's a Catholic. And we're always exposing the Catholic Church. So think of how nice it would be for the Roman Catholic Church if the body of Christ is gone. See, you know, I... Between you and me, I kind of do have a vested interest. I'll just be honest, all right? You see, I don't want to be around you people either if you don't want to be saved. So my vested interest is I want to go to be with the Lord. I want the blessed hope, you know, to me, the rapture. I'm looking for it as, you know, as well. So you praying for the rapture is going to do you a favor and it's going to do me a favor. So let's please make that happen, okay? Um, how about mainstream media? Another group that would really benefit from the catching up of the body of Christ, especially if some theories are, are true, that the children will actually be leaving with us, uh, all children under the age of accountability. Uh, think about the media event that will be. I mean, you guys won't even be able to sleep. You'll be so busy. Talk about, you know, you think the pandemic thing was big news. Oh boy, catching up with the body of Christ, whew, it's going to make or break some careers out there for these mainstream media people. You know, do your little... Uh, uh, Orwell, or Orson Welles, excuse me, thing, the War of the Worlds, the little propaganda 
tactics that these guys in early radio worked out with uh, causing fear, causing panic, and then bringing in the experts to tell their opinions and whatever else. And then you bring in more experts and you back to the scenes and what's going on, what's the latest, what's the latest. And you keep people just glued to the screen. Man, what better time than the catching up of the body of Christ. The rapture happens. There's people gone. We don't know what happened. It was it a bomb that hit? Was it a terrorist attack? Where did the children go? What's going on? We're going here to the Pope, this Archbishop here, and he's saying there's rumors that there's it was a rapture. There's no such thing. That's been a lie. These people, you know, there might be some tie-ins, but we don't know yet. And we're we're still, you know, we're joining us now is such. Think of the media. They're going to have just a heyday with the catching up of the body of Christ. So, hey, if you're a part of the media, you're one of these lost media people, that's all, you're just a, an intellectual prostitute for the big pharma and whatever else, whoever hires you to spew their lies, um, you ought to pray for the rapture because that's going to make your career go to a whole new level. And finally, another group that's going to, that really needs the rapture to happen is the post-tribbers. You see, right now there's a lot, a lot of lost people out there that are all about work salvation when you get right down to it. Oh, they'll, they'll claim that they believe in Jesus Christ by grace through faith and, and, you know, and all this other stuff. But you'll hear them, you get to talking to them, and they'll say, oh, you're pre-trib? Well, you just wait to see what happens when Jesus doesn't come back. Then we'll see how strong you are. It's about works, you see. They don't believe that your profession is genuine if you believe that Jesus is coming before the tribulation. They don't believe that. Why? Because they themselves are working they themselves think, when it happens, then I'll get to prove how tough I am. And of course, when the pre-trib rapture does happen, when we get called up before the time of Jacob's trouble, when it happens, they'll be right then. Because then they will be going through their uh, <clears throat> great tribulation through the time of Jacob's trouble. They get to go through it. What an exciting day that will be for them. You know, hey, we're finally right. And all those stupid pre-trib, the pre-trib mafia, with uh, Denlinger and all the other pre-trib nut preachers out there, they're all gone. Yeah, finally, nobody can answer our, our claims. And their ch claims will be true at that point in time. Think of the possibilities. <laughs> I mean, what better thing to pray for if you're a postie, right? You know, look forward to it, man. Just, okay, Lord, get these guys out of here. You know, okay, they can leave. Now I'll be right. Think about the possibilities. So, um... A lot of this stuff is just said in jest, you know, brethren. I mean, there's truth behind what I'm saying, but uh, if you are newly saved and you are starting to fall for some of the lies of the post-trib movement that the body of Christ has to go into this time, and, and uh, you know, Jesus didn't quite pay for everything. There's a, the purification of the body of Christ that has to come yet in the future. It's not the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanseth us from all sin. No, no. Um, it's, it's we have to go into this time of Jacob's trouble. It's not really the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the time of the church's trouble. It's the great tribulation for the church. So we can prove how tough we are and some won't endure to the end and they'll apparently lose their salvation, I guess. You know, um, yeah, <laughs> that's a problem. Um, anybody out there that's teaching you that the body of Christ is going to go into this time of Jacob's trouble, they're false, period. There is no other way. Um, I've talked with people, I've, I can't say debated because a debate is a sin in scripture, but, uh, I've, I've certainly argued with some of these posties over the years and gone back and forth and I've heard the arguments and, and whatever else. Um, if you're believing in the whole post-trib thing and you're genuinely saved, you need to repent of that. It isn't a thing that God just doesn't care or whatever else. We're talking about the resurrection. And Jesus says in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. You know, he is the resurrection. So if you're getting the resurrection messed up, you're messing up Jesus Christ. Understand that. You're messing up your salvation. That's how important it is. So I do hope that you get this thing straightened out. Watch my videos on the pre-trib rapture. Um, Again, that's a popular term, pre-trib rapture. It's not in the scriptures. Um, it's the catching up, being caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Time of Jacob's trouble is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Um, 
catching up there that being caught up is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 50, 15, verses 51 through 58 in there. And of course, you know, the other parts of the Bible on the catching up of the body of Christ are, you know, John chapter 10, um, Ephesians chapter 1, there's a lot of that in there too. Uh, really powerful stuff on the body of Christ being caught up and John chapter 11 as well. So, which I've covered in all the other studies, so we won't get into it here. But uh, please do study this issue, and I thank you for watching.